Well, welcome back to another quick pitch uh, baseball video. In this video we're going to do something just a little bit different. Uh, this will not be a game. Um, this is going to be a tutorial of sorts. Uh, and when I started this journey a couple of years ago of, of uh, building games starting with on-base baseball, one of my uh, sort of high goals was to leverage the community uh, in any ways that I can to make the games better uh, for um, creation ge creation of the game or uh, editing or whatever it is and and I've been able to do that but there was one part that I haven't been able to successfully sort of integrate into a game yet and that is uh, user generated content so I'm only one man I have a full-time job I have a full-time family and um, you know, there's only just so much I can do with a, a couple of hours each morning. So, uh, leveraging the community, even if it's just one person, you know, just doing one season and we have, you know, 50 of those, um, 20 of those uh, who can do that, then that's 20 seasons that could be produced faster than what I can. So I can produce one at a time or we can produce 20 at a time. So. You know, baseball especially is uh, got a long history, and there's a lot to cover. And quick pitch can actually, you know, cover those, uh, can cover all those seasons because of the different stats that I chose to use. I wanted it to be cross era. I wanted it to be uh, historical in the sense that you could um, play a team from the dead ball era, or you could play a team uh, from last year. So I tried to pick and choose uh, the different values you can see here. These are just counting stats that, for the most part, have been counted throughout the history of baseball. Uh, some of them have not. <coughs> some of them have, have, you know, you have a hard time, like with early seasons. Uh, and I actually haven't tried it with early seasons. I've just started with the 70s and 80s. So uh, I, I suppose that's yet to be seen, whether it, it plays well as you go really far back. But at the very least, we could do the 50s and 60s, I think, uh, all the way through the modern era. And so essentially what it would be would be uh, this is um, sort of what the template is going to look like. You can see here uh, that all of my uh, batter data goes here. All of the pitcher data is going to go here. Anytime you see this error, that means that it's a formula. So you can see up here the formula is here. And the formula just doesn't have any of these values uh, set into it that it needs to calculate whatever it's going to calculate. And anytime you see this sort of grayed out area, that's going to be something that uh, any user who's doing user generated content would need to fill in uh, those areas. So um, let me just show you the way it works and the way that I do it. Uh, so just here's the, uh, this is the picture data. Uh, the batter data. We have the batter cards and you'll recognize the cards right away. Um, not sure why that's there but <coughs> that'll change in just a moment. And then we have our pitcher cards here. So you'll recognize these uh, elements of the game. And then here I just have sort of a, a blank worksheet that I use to kind of work out different things and I can show you that throughout the process especially stuff like uh, uh, if you want to pull data and then sort of sift through that data and rearrange the players into the right order and then take that data from here and just copy and paste it into uh, this here which is our sort of working data set um, we have uh, for batters we have their name, their position, batting and throwing, and then we have sort of base baseline statistics here. Um, we have their average, their fielding percentage is what this is, and then the range. Um, and then over here we have something called stolen base opportunities, uh, which is something I get from Baseball Reference. Uh, it's a number that they have themselves, and speed is a number that I get off the fan graphs and I'll show you how to uh, get the speed along with all the sort of basic ratings. So fielding range, stolen base opportunities, 
Uh, it's like a SBO percentage, I think, is something like that. <clears throat> uh, no, it's actual. No, it's an actual number. Um, and so we get those three things from uh, Baseball Reference: speed, and then all of the uh, sort of counting stats um, that comes off of fan graphs. Uh, positions and batting and throwing I've also been getting off of uh, baseball reference and maybe you ask well, why why not just get everything off of baseball reference that's a good question to ask and it's something that you definitely can do for yourself um, I have not tried going back the other way I personally prefer fan graphs uh, but baseball reference is good as well. Uh, the one thing that um, there are a couple of tricks. Uh, one is when you download a data set, each uh, player is given a unique ID, whether you're using baseball reference or whether you're using fan graphs. So, <coughs> excuse me, with fan graphs, it's a number. With um, Baseball reference, it's uh, mostly the characters of the person's name with a number mixed in as well. Um, so <clears throat> feel free to use whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, we're just trying to get the data into this area. <laughs> so you can do it however you want to. I'm just going to show you my process. Um, and, you know, you can literally go, you know, line by line by hand if you want to, look up every player. I do not suggest doing that because, you know, it takes a lot. But if you're only doing, you know, the best two or three players off of every team, you know, go for it. You know, whatever you think is, is good or whatever you want to do. So let's just jump into this. So first I want to get, uh, I'm going to be focusing on getting the names and the sort of the counting stats here um, and the speed rating. So that's what I can pull. You can see here I'm I'm starting with the 1979 uh, season. That'll be the next one. So I come here uh, to fan graphs, and the URL for the leaderboard is fangraphs.com/leaders.aspx. So built with ASP. If you're familiar with that, uh, otherwise you can <clears throat> you can get here. Uh, under the leaders tab and just choose um, you can just choose any of these really like if you just went to 2022 uh, it would bring up the leaderboard but it would show you the single season of 2022 now I'm going to go down to 1979 that's the season that I want and so you just got to kind of <clears throat> set things up the way that you want them to be. We want player stats so that we have individual players. You can see the players here. And I want to split the teams so that if a player played for uh, two teams, then we have his statistics for both teams. Uh, that way when we create the cards, there will be one card for each team that he played for. Uh, we won't have to like... Mm, trade them physically in the game he'll just be under the team if he had enough at bats if he didn't have enough at bats you know then he doesn't get in there but um and we want to do all the teams we want to do all the leagues and this stuff is all good and the last one is the qualify the plate appearances so what is there a minimum plate appearance uh for me yes i have set 30 to be the minimum uh, plate appearances and I'll show you the difference so the difference is uh, well not for zero you can do zero and then that would be literally everyone who got a plate appearance so that gives us 732 items for 1979 and then if we cut it down to 30 as uh, our minimum plate appearances you can see that it's now 529 so that lops off a good hundred and and 50 or so uh, players who just had very minimum at bats, uh, not <clears throat> you know less than 30 at bats. So everybody in this data set is going to have at least 30 plate appearances, and that's what I've been using across the board for all of the quick pitch baseball uh, sets that I've done so far. So we have 1979. We have our batters. Uh, they're individual players. 
we have split their teams so that there are no um, no players that don't have a team. Every player should have a team next to them, even if you play for two or three teams. Uh, we're going to not mess with any of these things. We want all the players, and because we want to include pitchers too. If you didn't want to include pitchers, you could click on this NP, and that is um, position players only. This is uh, not pitchers or no pitchers. Um, so if that was something that you wanted to do, you could do that. But you would not wind up with a pitcher hitting card. So just know that is going to be true. This way with the 30, 30 at bats, you're probably going to get your top five or so starting pitchers. Uh, because they they will have had, especially in 1979, they will have had uh, at least 30 at bats. Um, so uh, it is going to include some pitchers and then also I have a generic pitching card just in case a, a pitcher is not carded as an individual hitter actually needs to bat then there's sort of a generic pitching card uh, that's been created as well <coughs> excuse me and you can feel free to to use a pitcher card and base you know use that as the basis for a generic hitting pitcher or you can do grades of pitchers if you wanted to you know that uh, a particular batter is uh, a pitcher is a good batter one's an average batter one's a poor batter you can use that to sort of grade out those batters if you want to but uh, you would then need to know what kind of batter uh, the pitcher was <laughs> so um, it's a little bit more work on your end to do it that way so we have some pitchers uh, we have all of our hitters and this is from 1979 and what we need is uh, the dashboard gives you these sort of uh, standard sabermetric stats uh, with a few counting stats that are important um, but what we want to do is we want to click on standard <coughs> I try to be kind uh, with fan graphs because I like them and I keep the ads on that's why I haven't put the ad blocker on here uh, I used to do that and I felt bad for it because I don't subscribe uh, but I do get a lot of data off here, so that can at least help them with their ads. Uh, so now we have all the same, uh, all the same parameters, uh, except now we're looking at our standard stats. So these are all of our counting stats. You'll see that they're exactly uh, as we have them here. So games, at bats, all the way through uh, to average, and they're exactly the same here. Now we have a few that we're going to need to cut out. These three here, uh, sacrifice flies, sacrifice hits, and grounded into double plays, and also intentional walks. We'll actually remove that from our data set. Now, uh, if you sign in, you can actually go down and create different um, reports. So you can go through and clear all this stuff out, put in only the, uh, only the categories that you want of stats, and then you can say name and save that report. And then whenever you want to pull it back up, let's say, I want to do um, only the values for this game. I could remove uh, these values here, add in speed, which is what I'm going to do, and then I could actually save that report uh, and then come back and when you click on these, it, it brings that report up, which is uh, a, a really nice thing to have. You can see I'm doing that with uh, on base advanced and this is for on base and um, this is for on base as well because I have some kind of some funky layouts uh, for that so I've, I've actually utilized that a little bit uh, as well okay so we have all of our stats here we got 530 players <coughs> and I am gonna add the speed value and if you go down through here there's lots of different uh, things that you can add on here and one is speed and so I'm gonna click on that and if you click this single arrow then it will put it over here to the right and it's actually going to put it at the end you can click on that and move it up or down that just moves it right now it's going to tack on to the end but you can move it anywhere here I'm just going to put it on the end because in our uh, our layout here it goes to average and then speed is way over here so um, it's just the way that conceptually I, I thought about it uh, in the spreadsheet and the way I put it together just to kind of keep it separate so now we have our our speed in here and we're going to create a custom table 
So that's going to give us all of these uh, same categories here plus the speed category. <clears throat> so maybe this will help you to learn how to use uh, fan graphs a little bit better too. <laughs> um, so you can really create a custom data set, uh, whatever you want. Still are 529 players, but now they all have a speed rating. And the speed rating is what we're using uh, inside of um, inside of here the speed rating uh, directly correlates to the success value uh, so it's really um, I could show you in there and it'll I'll show you the calculations in just a moment as well so success is the speed times 100 so if we have a 2.3 uh, 2.3 times 100 is going to be um, <coughs> it will be a 230. So we move the decimal two places to the right. right? So 2.3 times 100 is 230. So, uh, so that's how we figure uh, the speed rating. Same thing for the um, the green light. The green light is uh, your stolen base opportunities. Stolen base attempts divided by stolen base opportunities times 1000 so that's going to give you a um, that's going to give you a point something 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 you multiply that by 1000 you get a single number um, and a, a whole number not a decimal and then it's going to make that 1 to whatever right so maybe you're, it's a point zero seven five and then we multiply by a thousand that's going to give us one to 75 so it's <coughs> you'll see a lot of these calculations are going to happen uh, automatically especially when we fill in the first uh, set of uh, first data set of just these sort of basics that we have here sorry about that uh, hopefully that didn't make it on the camera A little bit of a sneeze there <clears throat> and um, we've got all of our players here so you can see Jim Rice and here's a good example Oscar Gamble is with Texas played 64 games Oscar Gamble with New York played 36 so you can you can see right there how <clears throat> how a player could be on both teams that's the importance of doing uh, clicking on this split teams so let's go ahead and um, export our data uh, so we have our unique data set here with the speed we're going to export the data and what this does is it uh, downloads it as a CSV file so if you open that up uh, for me it opens up uh, Excel and so we're going to have just sort of our uh, players here along the left side and this is our entire data set all 529 players so it says 530 but that's because there's a heading at the top right so it's really 529 players and I told you that each player is given a unique ID you can see their unique ID here uh, every single player has that <clears throat> and the lower the number the older the player so who is this Ricky Henderson uh, I think that's how it works the older uh, the higher the number the newer the players so players today are in like the 20 thousands um, I'm sorry the two millions I guess two million something like that so <clears throat> but recognize that Oscar Gamble with New York has his own number so four four seven three and So he retains his, his own number, so that's good. Uh, so it's going to put those two together anytime we order by their uh, by their player ID. So again, let's uh, cleanse our data just a little bit. Again, you can do this before you download them, or you can do it afterwards. So I'm going to get rid of the uh, intentional walks, sacrifice flies and hits, and ground it into double plays. And I'm also going to get rid of 
I normally get rid of the player ID as well because uh, I, after this I'm going to use the player name um, in alphabetical order. So that's how I'm going to sort of decide everything after that. So let's just delete those. <coughs> we got our clean data set here. <coughs> now you can take this and I'm just going to show you um, how I would go about just in setting this uh, data set. So I would normally, I like to do my data by team. So I'm going to click on this and sort from A to Z. And it's going to ask me, do I want to sort the entire thing or just this column? Yes, I want to expand that to the entire spreadsheet so that it sorts uh, all the lines, not just that one column. So now everybody's sorted. Yeah, Bob Horner and Gary Matthews. So you start with Atlanta, Baltimore, Boston. You got all these teams in team order. <coughs> now, who knows how they're set in order uh, once they get in here. It's uh, by... Looks like it's going to be by average. No, not by average. Uh, you know, I have no idea how they've uh, reordered... <laughs> I don't know how they've chosen the order. Maybe by their uh, IDs. I'm not sure how they choose the order uh, once they get in there. But uh, they're ordered by team. <clears throat> and if we look at our spreadsheet, we just need to like pull in the data. Um, so we need to pull in their names first. And again, this is under the batter, da batter data. So I'm going to pull in the names first. So I'll just highlight all that, copy it, and I'm just going to paste that. Uh, I like to do a paste of the values only, because you can see here it's Calibri. <coughs> we just want to make sure that we keep only the values and not any of the, the formatting. I don't want to get the formatting off of uh, whatever spreadsheet program I'm using. I want to keep the formatting for this. It's nothing special. It's just Calibri 12. But, uh, but I like to keep that consistency uh, if I can. Okay, next thing we need. Uh, so I can reset that. I don't need that anymore. Next thing we need is uh, all of these stats here. So games through average. And we have those in our spreadsheet. So I'm just going to take the games, start there, and then go all the way over to the average and then I'm going to go down <coughs> to the end and now that's our full data set for 1979 all the batters uh, in order here who uh, have had at least 30 at bats okay and so magically you see our <coughs> our data set begins to fill out even so far as as inputting the hit ranges and these calculations are a little bit extraneous if I ever wanted to use them I could uh, originally I had this as a true 50-50 game so just like the pitcher had an at-bat chart the batters have an at-bat chart so all of these uh, things together are just like the pitcher um, the pitcher at-bat chart uh, the batter had one. So it was like roll one to three, it goes to the pitcher. Roll four to six, it goes to the batter. So it was like a true 50 50. Um, as I was playing it somewhere along the way, I thought this is not reality. I guess it's, or I just wanted to experiment with the pitcher uh, outcomes. But I suppose if you wanted to add these in, you could. Um, they're, they're all calculated here. So this is hits per plate appearance. Um, and then, you know, you would have to figure out how to, just like the, uh, over here, the finals, take into account hits, uh, hits per batter's faced, hits by, hit by pitch per batter's faced. And then we add those all together <coughs> um, and we get the, the finals. Um, so I can show you how that works in just a minute when I do the pitchers. But right now you can see, well, let's get our last uh, piece of data. Our last piece of data is the speed value. So let's go ahead and get that. 
and that will be our initial data set so we're just going to copy that down and I always go through and make sure that I have um, everything stops at the right <laughs> at the right place so all of the data should stop here it shouldn't spill over into another one where there's no player so just make sure of that uh, we can get rid of these because we don't need them so I'm just gonna delete those and now our data set is where it should be so what are we still missing we're still missing our stolen base opportunities we're missing our fielding and range and fielding and range will d will determine catch and range uh, so these are directly correlated to the U column <coughs> the catch is so catch is fielding is fielding percentage times a thousand which gives us a whole number uh, range is the same thing it's um, range so V uh, it's range times 100 uh, with a maximum of 1000 so the range cannot go over a thousand so if for some reason your range for your player is an 11.2 um, it would come out to 1120 uh, which is not a possible roll right <laughs> so 1000 is the highest roll that we can make um, so I cap that at 1000 uh, just give it a minimum and then uh, cap that at, at 1000 and basically the concatenate just puts this one dash at the beginning of everything so with the speed here it's a uh, one dash and then whatever this calculation is so 5.9 times 100 that was what I told you before about speed 5.9 times 100 is 590 and then I just tack on this 1 dash 590 so that when we look at our batter card you can see here that for hits all of our hits are in here we got our player name <coughs> so for Bob Horner 67.9% uh, of his uh, hits were singles and looks like uh, what is that uh, 12, 11.6% of his hits were home runs and then everything else in the middle. And so all of those are calculated uh, automatically <coughs> right here in, in this section starting right here and basically we concatenate the one dash and then we do the calculation of uh, singles to hits. Um, so how many total hits do we have which is over here 153 hits so we basically divide this number uh, by this number and then that's going to give us a decimal and so then we multiply that decimal by a thousand and that gives us uh, the 679 so that's how that uh, all works out so we get a nice round number uh, but the original number there is 0.679 and so then we multiply that by a thousand uh, same thing goes here so we concatenate uh, this number so AB3 so AB3 is here so we look at that number and then we um, look at the right side of that number three spaces the last three spaces so we're looking at these three numbers 679 we're adding one so that makes it 680 and then that's the number that we put here so this is 679 plus 1 is 680 we put a dash the dash is there and then we do the same thing over here so AB3 <coughs> 679 plus whatever the uh, calculation is for our doubles to hits so doubles here 15 divided by 153 uh, and then we multiply that by 1000 so this is the same as what we did here but we've just added one basically um, to that so it gets us to uh, 777 uh, as our number and what we really want is we want to add on to this 679 whatever this calculation is so that gets us to six seven seven seventy seven that's why that's not a, a, a plus there's a plus one here but not a plus one there uh, if you actually do the calculations it's six seventy nine 
plus whatever this calculation is times a thousand that gets you this number and so it feels like it's like one behind and that you should be adding one somewhere along the way but you really shouldn't just kind of trust me on that if you figure it out yourself by hand you'll see um, and I do this with up-tempo basketball so you know this is this is the way I've been doing games so just trust me on this one that <laughs> it doesn't really look right but trust me it, it comes out right because you can see here <clears throat> that it comes out to 783 and then it comes out uh, to an even 1000 and if you do the calculations for all these they they come out correctly um, all right uh, you can see here that our stolen base attempts are automatically calculated so it's uh, it's calculating stolen bases plus caught stealing so R plus S um, so here there's 24 24 here no stolen bases to caught stealing so that's gonna be uh, this is how many stolen base attempts that the player has made and then we have to find stolen base opportunities so we want to know how much does this player run? Okay, so he's over two, but how many times did he run? Okay, he ran at least twice. He stole. He he attempted twice, but how many time? How many opportunities did he have? So how frequently really is the number that we were looking for? How frequently does this player run? Because one of the difficulties is trying to decide. Um, how often you should be stealing uh, with a player and so this is sort of an automated uh, stealing mechanism you can use it or not use it doesn't matter either way um, but it's helpful to send especially runners who don't steal very often right so it's just kind of helpful to say yeah I don't know I mean he's one for six in the, on the year in stolen bases but he had 600 at bats so how many times that he could have run did he actually run and I don't really want to figure that out I just want it to be kind of accurate and so you roll against this green light number and if it's within that green light range then he takes off so you're sort of obligated uh, to do that and then his success rating of 1 to 180 uh, is actually it's been calculated because we have our speed right 1.8 times 100 is the 180 and then we tack on the one uh, so you're getting a real behind the scenes look here <laughs> so what do we still have uh, we filled in all of our primary stats so all of those get automatically imported into the chart we've got our hits those have been automatically calculated we have our name um, I can show you how to do the name down here this will automatically go in as well and uh, we need the green light uh, which will have to do with stolen base opportunities and we need to fill in this information which I have largely filled in um, by hand at this point because these numbers don't actually exist uh, in the 70s or the early 80s so I gotta do a little trickeration uh, to get numbers for them and the catch in the range need to be set as well so this is where we go over to uh, we go over to baseball reference if you just type in the year <clears throat> and you can go to the major leagues in 1979 and we what we need here is we need individual players okay so we're gonna have to go to the team page uh, first up is gonna be the Braves and so I'm just gonna open up a new uh, tab on that and one thing you could see up here is if you just if you just change the team name and you kind of get the hang of it after a while you know if you want the Cubs it's CHC uh, if you want uh, Oakland it's OAK and so you can see that it sends us to the team page for each one for uh, 1979 and what we're looking for is the ATL and these are the Braves and uh, these are your starters uh, for each uh, for that year and let's look at the pieces of data that we need the pieces of data that we still need are stolen base opportunities fielding and range and I guess we can go ahead and fill this in we have our example here 
I'm just going to do it like this. And we're going to say 1979. Okay. So once you fill that in, you can see on the batter card that it fills it in. Excuse me, correctly with uh, the name of the team. So city, mascot, and year. <clears throat> so we have that all set up, and all you have to do, you know, at that point is uh, just sort of pull that down. Um, you're going to get some kind of funkinesses here with the. We don't need all those lines. It's taking this line up here. But basically, we're coming down to. Uh, you can usually see where the line is here. You can see the line here is uh, how many plate appearances. And <laughs> so you go from 78 to 688, uh, which I think is actually, this is the line here, 24. Uh, you can always double check that by going over here and finding the last person. So Terry Crowley is actually the first for Baltimore. So that's, we're one off. Uh, so, Brizolera, I guess is his name. He's going to be the last one, so down to 23. So you can just pull that down to uh, here. And that looks right. Okay, so those are all of our Braves. And then every time you create a, a new card, it's going to fill that in automatically. You can do that first, last, doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> So what we need is our stolen base opportunities and our fielding and range. So let's go back here. Stolen base opportunities are in a, a bit of a strange section. It's under batting and uh, okay so you click on batting and then you're gonna find it under team base running and miscellaneous. And you can see that this is our stolen base opportunities. Now they don't give you, sometimes when you hover over it, they'll give you a little, um, they'll give you a formula uh, for figuring that out. Like here, stolen bases divided by stolen bases plus cost dealing is your stolen base percentage. Um, but they don't really give you that here. There's a formula there, but they don't really reveal how they get to these stolen base opportunities. I've tried to do sort of a handmade one uh, that included singles, walks, adding uh, singles, walks, and hit by pitch. Um, and that gets you pretty close if you didn't want to have to go in and do this. That actually gets you pretty close. Uh, you could go back in here and, and say stolen base opportunities equals um, it equals I. We'll just do it ourselves. So this is a bit of a tangent, but I'll show you that you can do it yourself and get pretty close. Uh, I3 plus um, O plus Q. Okay. So O3 plus Q3. Okay. So, uh, not going to take this suggested autofill, although, although you could. Uh, so we come out with 129 stolen base opportunities. These are, so that's when he's got a single, um, there's a walk or a hit by pitch. Now you can't, it's messed up because you can't assume that every time he gets a single that there's an opportunity to steal. Every time he has a, a walk, there's an opportunity to steal. So it's not perfect. That's why I went to the stolen base opportunity. Um, that's why I started using this because they have already done the calculations and if you look at uh, Bob Horner they come out with 186 opportunities where I only had 129 so they're they're pulling opportunities from somewhere else maybe intentional walks are included in there but we took that out of our data set um, and so if you do this their green light is going to be a little bit uh, higher so maybe you like that. I don't know. Or maybe you just don't want to deal with what I'm about to do. And so you could put that in there if you wanted to. But if you do 186 instead, uh, you can see that it goes from 1 to 15 to 1 to 10. 
and so he has to roll between a 1 and a 10. So a 10 is like, uh, what is that, 1%? No, not even 1%. Yeah, 1%. So a 10 is 1% or 0.1%, sorry. A 10 is 0.1% of the time that he has a stolen base opportunity, he actually steals the base. So uh, that's what green light means, and that's how it's calculated. Uh, so I would go ahead and I would come over and I'll just show you how to get some of this data out of uh, out of baseball reference if you haven't done that before. Uh, so here is um, our sharing and exporting um, menu and we have a lot of different things that we can do here. I personally like to modify uh, the tables and what this does is it allows me to pick and choose which of these uh, pieces of data that I want and I can pick and choose it on the fly. So if you click the X, it'll delete the entire column. Uh, if you click on this, it deletes everything from this column till the end. <clears throat> so let's say you wanted these three pieces of information, but you didn't want to have to go through and click XXXX. You could just click here and that will keep these three, but get rid of everything else. Um, and then we have different ways that we can share our data, like we can get the data out. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and narrow down our data set first. We want to keep the name. Uh, plate appearances. I'm not going to use plate appearances because I've used that before. And it, we have two different data sets. We have a data set from Fangrass and we have a data set from here. And it just... I try, I've racked my brain trying to figure out like how can we reconcile these two things? Where is the one point at which they both overlap <laughs> and cross? And the one point at which they overlap is the player name. So <laughs> I've tried as many things as I could to get that to work out and it just doesn't work out even though it should. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to get rid of all of the ones except for stolen base opportunities. I'm going to click this because I don't need any other data from here. And then I prefer to use uh, the comma separated or CSV. So when you click on that, it gives you uh, a CSV file, I guess. And I don't uh, copy everything. I just sort of start there and come down to the last person. So recognize that there's a league average here and then there's a team total. I don't need any of that. I just need down to the last person. So the last person is Larry Wisenton. And you can see here, this is what I was talking about, the unique identifier that they have. So I'm going to uh, copy that. Or you could cut it. Why did I cut it? Normally I copy it. Uh, or you could do Control C. And then I want to come back to, remember I told you I had a little worksheet and a workspace. So I just want to paste that in here. Uh, in Google uh, Sheets, it's going to paste everything in one column. And the way you get rid of that is you go to Data and split text to columns and it just splits it all up into its own column. So now we have the name, we have the stolen base opportunities, and then we have their unique identifier. Uh, I don't need this column actually uh, for this and what I'm going to do is <coughs> I'm going to go back to my data just for the Braves and let's just grab all the Braves. Uh, typically I like to work in a little bit where I can see more of the data. Uh, so I just make sure that I select all of Atlanta, which is what I have here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort, uh, I'm going to sort this, just this highlighted data, sort the range, not the sheet, but the range. Um, I'm going to sort that by column A and I want to sort it A to Z. So that's going to put all of our uh, players, all of our batters in alphabetical order. So we click sort and now we have starting with their first names and whatever you use for alphabetical order you should stick with it. If you want to do all this work in Excel because you feel better about it, stick with doing pulling all the data into Excel <clears throat> and then uh, doing alphabetical order uh, in Excel. So do this worksheet and do the batter data if you want to do it in Excel. Do it all in Excel because I found that they don't do alphabetical order all the same way. So um, 
do it in alphabetical order. It's going to give you their first names. And then <clears throat> we're going to come here and we're going to put this all in alphabetical order. So we're going to sort that range by column A, A to Z. So now we have Divine, Bonnell, uh, Pacaroba, McLaughlin, uh, Bonnell, Pacaroba, Horner, Benedict. Okay, so we run into some of the uh, issues here, right? <laughs> okay, so this is where the a little bit of uh, time to do it by hand. Um, so we just got to match up these uh, data sets: Bonnell, Pacaroba, Horner, Benedict, right? Uh, so Bonnell, Pacaroba, Horner, Benedict. I'm just, I'm on a Mac. I'm I'm pressing Command and click. Um, if you're on a PC, it's Control, uh, and then you can just pick out your data set. So. Uh, I have to go through here. You could have done, um, you could have done up here. Where are they? So we could have chosen um, our plate appearances. So what you could do, and just reload. In order to get back to what you had, you just reload it. So we could have actually kept plate appearances, and then stolen base opportunities and then we could have said you know sort by plate appearances and then any of these guys here who are less than uh, less than 30 we're just gonna eliminate those uh, but we would have to do that inside of our <coughs> inside of our data so come in here we split the text we come through our data set here because uh, we're going to sort um, we can right click we can sort uh, Z to A which sorts all of our data by plate appearances so you can see that the Sarge has the most Jerry Royster second etc um, and we can go through here and look at anybody that does not have at least 30 uh, we can click on those and delete them uh, so now we have our data set here uh, we don't need this again uh, we now don't need uh, this necessarily and then we sort this by column A A to Z and now we have Bono, Pacaroba, Horner, Benedict, Spikes, Murphy Bono, Pacaroba, Horner, Benefix, Spikes, Murphy, Cheney. So we should have 3 through 23, which is uh, 20, I believe. And then we have 2 through 22. That should match up. And so that if you take all of these and copy them, um, it should actually match up with how many we have. So hopefully that works. Okay, and so it does. So now you can see a little bit more programmatic way uh, to do that. Or you can go through and you could you could have the whole team and just kind of choose uh, which one. So I try to work smart and not hard on these things uh, because it's a lot of data to sift through. And it's actually super interesting. <laughs> I'm going through this really fast. But as you're creating a season, you know, I was born in 1978, so I have no concept for 1979. Um, so for me, going through some of these seasons, 1982, 1986, I was still a little bit young and only paying attention to baseball cards at that point, so not really baseball itself. Um, it really wasn't until about the 1989 or 90 World Series that I was really paying attention. Uh, I may have seen Kurt Gibson hit the home run. I don't even remember. I've seen it so many times it feels like I did, but I don't think I did. I wasn't really paying attention until 89. I love Will Clark and the Giants, and so uh, I was really paying attention with the Bay World Series, probably for the first time. Uh, so we have all of our stolen base opportunities here, <clears throat> and now our green light has been configured. And you can see some of these guys. Uh, so 17 attempts in 42, uh, 42 opportunities. So almost every, you know half the time he got on base. Eddie Miller's taken off. He had 15 steals out of 17, so good percentage there. Um, good speed, 5.8. So 1 to 580, he's going to be safe. So 58%, he's going to be safe stealing. Uh, as long as there's no adjustments, you know, then if there's adjustments, 
whatever he can be in there. This is, you know, Jerry Royster's a premier base dealer, 35, and only caught eight times. He's taking off because he's an everyday player. Uh, he only had uh, 293 opportunities, which is a lot of opportunities compared to everybody else. But he's only a 1 to 146. If you're sticking with the green light, you have to roll a 146 or less in order for him to automatically take off. Now you can just send him if you want to. But in order to sort of play the automated system, that that's how often he would steal. And then you have uh, 7.1. So 1 to 71 basically 71 percent is his success in stealing or taking extra bases definitely a good number definitely a high number and uh, same here for Larry Wisenton although you can see Wisenton didn't play pretty much okay so now we've got our stolen base opportunities I'm just clear this up a little bit it's the uh, number two there all black and that gives us a nice little line. I just like to have that up there. And later on, I'll go through and I'll I'll draw lines uh, here to separate teams, just so that it's easier for me to see where the teams are separated. But you can easily see where they change. <coughs> and you can see here that our values have not been calculated down, only for Atlanta. Uh, you see some weirdnesses here. Uh, for players, these are pitchers, Phil Necro and Matula. Um, these are pitchers, so there are opportunities for base hits. Uh, they had no opportunities for triples or home runs, so it's automatically calculating these values and saying, hey, this isn't right because this is uh, 1,000. So. Um, so those are things that just have to be cleaned up. Uh, here's another player here with only... 40 uh, plate appearances so we'll clean up some of that stuff they're gonna be uh, duplicates up here where uh, like this this is a weirdness this just needs to be 1000 and so we'll just have to and this will need to be a zero or a blank because you can't have 1000 to 999 that doesn't exist basically there are no uh, triples for Pacaroba so it goes 999 to 1,000. We'll just have to clean up some of this stuff in the cards uh, at the end. There is an editing process that happens uh, at the end just to make sure that everything is uh, on the up and up. Okay, so the last thing we need is our fielding range. Um, and for fielding, we go to fielding. <coughs> and we're going to be doing um, the two numbers that we need are fielding percentage and RF range factor per nine innings. Now the reason that we do per nine innings uh, is just because uh, I find it maybe to be an easier number to work with. You could use range factor per game played uh, but you can see it's going to be significantly different in some instances. Um, range factor per nine innings is a little bit higher uh, which maybe represents their range just a little bit more. Uh, but for, you know, guys who didn't play very much, you know, they got one, eight innings in here. Uh, it's a little bit higher for his uh, per nine than his per game. Uh, all right. So same thing here. Uh, we're just going to modify the table. And we only want the data that we want. We want their name. We want their age. Uh, and see here, this is where plate appearances would be amazing. But we can't have plate appearances in here because they don't judge their innings uh, played in the field by plate appearances, right? Okay, so this throws everything off. So this is why you got to go by the uh, the only constant here is the player. You could use games, I guess, as a constant, but then if you go to the other uh, stolen base opportunities, they don't do by games, I don't think. They do by plate appearances, so... Uh, it's it's been a, a bit of a frustration because I can't get like super clean data where I just pull it all in and it's all right there and that would make this amazingly faster although it's pretty fast anyway once you get into the rhythm of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all these down to fielding percentage and then I'm going to get rid of uh, R totals and R totals per year so now we have our two values here 
and I don't need any of this other stuff. Although I do like to have this, so I'm going to keep the position summary. So I'm not just going to click here, I'm going to click down to the position summary and you'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to do our comma separated again. I'm going to grab this data set. I'm just hitting Control or Command C and coming back to our workbook. Uh, I don't need our stolen base opportunities anymore. So I'm just going to pull this data in. I uh, don't need their names. And now we have our position summary and we have our two values here. Now what we need to do is uh, double check that we are still in alphabetical order here. And we are. And again, this is gonna this is more players than we need. So we have 39 here, and we uh, remember before it was only 22. So <clears throat> there's no way to separate these players out from this data set uh, based on how many games played or uh, how many played appearances. So because we're talking about in the field at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, sort this data. Column A, A to Z, and that's the column that we want. Uh, that's the name column. So again, everybody's in alphabetical order. And what I, I've done many things in the past, I've sort of gone through and just, you know, pulled them each one out and separated them out that way. Uh, definitely acceptable. Um, here lately, I've gone to just highlighting the players. So I know that these first two are going to be on there. And then basically just kind of back and forth. Horner, Benedict, Spikes. So using control, I can grab these. Horner, Benedict, Spikes. I know that Dale Murphy is on there. Uh, Cheney, Miller, Solomon, Matthews. Cheney, Miller, Solomon, Gary Matthews. Um, Hubbard, Burroughs, Royster, Nolan. Hubbard. Jeff Burroughs, Royster, Joe Nolan, and so remember we're going down to this guy. So Wisenton, Lum, Frias, Necro, Matala, Bing is next, Office, and Brizolara. Office and Brizolara. So I don't want to waste this selection. So what I do is I come over and, um, well, I'll let me copy this first. Okay. Uh, I needed to do that a little bit better. Sorry about that. Uh, Horner, Benedict, Spikes, Murphy, Cheney, Miller. Solomon, Matthews, Hubbard, so I'm a little lost after Nolan Wisenton, Lum, Frias, Necro, mm. Matula office. Okay. So we have our data set. I'm just going to copy that. I should have done that first. And this goes right here because everything is in alphabetical order. It should go right down to uh, Brazola or Brazola. I don't know how you say that. Okay. So we do have that. It stops here. Now you can see our catch and our range are all filled in. Again, it caps at 1,000, uh, which is um, you can see here's one 10.1. That should be 1,010, but instead it caps it at 1,000. A lot of times you'll see that with the first baseman or sometimes catchers but often it's first baseman uh, but some of these guys get real close Murphy Pacaroba um, and so we have all of our numbers filled out here these guys make no errors so 1 to 1000 is their error rating 
basically. <clears throat> and they always make the play because they always have. Uh, but again, these are people who may or may not get into your replay. They have very few innings pitched or games played. Uh, but for most of your guys who are going to be in there, you know, this is their fielding percentage. And again, on the batter cards, it's going to automatically fill that out for you. So once you input the data set, a lot of this data is going to be filled out. So we have our base running, our success, our fielding, our hit percentages, and our um, just sort of baseline uh, statistical data. We have our team name. And what we're missing is the left, right, uh, how they bat and throw, and their position. And so if we go back to our data here, uh, what I've done is I've just uh, gone through and I give it a little bit of a background color. That way I can see who I chose and I don't have to go through that process of of, of going back and forth between uh, between tabs and, and figuring that out. If someone knows how I can take this data set and I can compare it to this data set and then eliminate anybody else <laughs> that's not in that data set, that would be amazing. Uh, that's exactly what I need, but I have not enough Excel skills for that kind of thing. Uh, so what I do is I just copy these down. These are already in alphabetical order, right? They're in the order that I need them to be. I uh, don't need that guy. And so I just copy the ones that are gray already. And that should take <clears throat> all of our players who are already uh, in alphabetical order and part of our uh, initial data set and I'm just going to copy that and come back over to our position and paste that in there <clears throat> so now we have all those uh, I like those for those to be right aligned and then uh, again you can clean up some of these uh, lines before after just whenever you feel like it. But every time you paste in from a not line to a line, it's going to erase the line for you. So uh, just get those a nice line there. And I go through here, and what I want to do is I want to get rid of uh, the, I want to get rid of the dash, and I want to replace it with a hyphen. Uh, in Google Sheets, it's Command Shift H or Control Shift H, I guess, is the find and replace. And so you want to find the dash in this selection right here. You want to find the dash and you want to replace it with a slash. And so you do replace all. You can see how it changes everything. And then you click done. And now when we look on our batter card for Bob Horner, we can see that these are his positions that he played. Uh, I like to clean that up just a little bit um, just because I know some of the they count some of these guys uh, if they have played one game at a position they give him that position that's not exactly what I'm looking for uh, so I just like to make sure that he actually played uh, those positions so the main game you know these are how many games he played at each position so he played 45 games at first he played 82 games at third. He played one game as a pinch hitter. Um, so what do we have him listed as? We have him listed as center field left. Oh, this is Bonnell. Sorry, Mary, because we uh, we put him in alphabetical order. So Bonnell. He has one game at third. The bulk of his games are in left and center field. Um, so. To me, that third base is illegitimate. I would not say that he plays third base when he played one game at third, so I get rid of that. And then his primary positions have been uh, center field first and left field. So I try to keep this down to uh, two or three. Some guys, if they've played more than one position like that, um, like let's see, uh, a good, here's a good example here. So he's played, um, most of his position has been at first base. This is Mike Lum. 
uh, maybe give him one of these other positions, like put him as an outfielder, so first base outfields, uh, because he did play in the outfield a little bit. But, you know, I would consolidate those outfield positions and not have uh, right field and left field. I would just have outfield, so first base outfield, right? Um, same here. Uh, he's a primary outfielder. Here's a good example, Spikes. So Spikes has played uh, all three outfield positions. Um, so left field, right field. Oh, he's had mostly pinch there. So left field, right field is okay. Uh, but if it gets to the place where you've got a guy who's played all three outfield positions, um, I will often just set him off as a uh, an outfielder. Uh, don't see anybody here, but maybe maybe this guy here, Cheney. Let's look at him, Cheney. Cheney played one game at catcher, but mostly second, third, and short, and then had some pinch hit appearances. Uh, so what I would do is I would not call him a catcher. I would call him really just an infielder, and that's what I would change it to infield. So he can kind of play all the infield positions, um, and then the rest of these seem like they're okay. So you got three pitchers here, three starting pitchers for Eddie Solomon. So you get four starting pitchers, kind of their top four starters uh, based on plate appearances. So you do get some uh, pitchers as well. <clears throat> okay, so we're almost all the way uh, complete on our data set. So we have uh, fielding range, stolen base opportunity, speed, team. So we can actually sort of <clears throat> get rid of the uh, get rid of that because we you don't have to get rid of this I'm just showing you what's left so what's left is our batting and throwing and again uh, this is not always straightforward because again it comes to uh, games played and that just isn't <clears throat> it's a it's an okay uh, one uh, it's an okay one to to do our sorting by but again doing it by uh, the player name is just going to be a little bit easier for us. Uh, so what we need here is our batting and throwing. And we have our... Uh, I like to keep the pitchers separate for the pitching. Wow, that didn't work. That was dumb. Okay, I like to keep the pitchers on there as well, just so that I can uh, sort by pitchers uh, more easily and say, hey, these are the pitchers who are on the roster, and then I have to do their left and right splits as well. Uh, so I'm going to do <clears throat> everything to the pitcher, and then I don't need any of the rest of this, so I'm just going to get rid of it like this. I'm going to bring this over here and copy it again, bring it into our workbook. Don't need any of these things anymore. And so I'm going to do that. I need any of that. And I'm going to format the, uh, this column. Sorry. <clears throat> Split this data into columns. Don't need these. It just tacks those uh, IDs on automatically. Um, so you can get rid of them if you want to. So now we have how many games that players have pitched, and that should that should help us to sort out our pitchers because we can sort by this column, and we can say, okay, these are the pitchers, and then sort our pitchers by uh, by their names. So um, we'll go through and we'll format this data. One trick, if you start wherever you put your cursor to begin um, highlighting something and it's highlighted there, when you go up here and it does sort range, it's going to choose that highlighted column. So if you want to sort everything by column A, just start in column A and go down. And then you don't have to go into this little thing here. You can just do column A, A to Z. If you wanted to sort it by this column, then you could click and go the other way. And it would sort it by column D. And then you can choose highest number or lowest number to start. So. Just a little tip and trick. Uh, so again, we're going to have to go through and, and look at our players. And hopefully, you know, you remember some of these. So Bono, Pacaroba, Horner, 
Benedict, Spikes, Murphy, Cheney, Miller, Solomon. I think that's right. Murphy, Cheney, Miller, Solomon. Matthews, Hubbard, Burroughs, Royster. And maybe you know some of these players better than I do, but they're just names to me for the most part. Nolan, Wisenton, Lum, Frias. Um, is that Necro? Necro, Matla, Office. Okay. So... I'm going to copy those and I'm going to paste them again right here. Uh, again, I like these to be right aligned. So we have everything down to the right place. So I just want to make sure that all of our data goes down to the, the correct place. Uh, I'm a little anal about the uh, about the separators. So now we have all of our um, left to right and so you can see with our card we have everything here that is automatically generated and so we have the name we have bats and throws we have their pos uh, position their hit percentages their stats their team the fielding table and the base running table now the only thing left is this part here and that part is actually um, the only part because this is an older season these numbers don't actually exist so there are no batted ball statistics for 1979 uh, if you go and you look let's say we look in uh, Jeff Burroughs um, normally it would be somewhere down in here I think it would be in between these two uh, there would be batted ball statistics, but we don't actually have those batted ball stats. Now, if you go to him in, um, oh, I don't know, go to a mark, like choose a, a player that's a little bit um, more modern, and you can see here that there are batted ball statistics that you could pull in. And basically, we're doing the uh, line drive, ground ball, fly ball, and we're using those statistics. So this is 1988 as rookie year, so all the way back to the 80s, uh, just not as far back in the 80s as I've gone so far. This really started, this kicked off in like 1986 or 7 or something like that, uh, that they had these statistics. So uh, we have these stats, just not for such an old season. So that's why this gets a little tricky. Um, and we don't use the pull center oppo uh, we just use the fly ball ground ball and line drive and basically we're using these uh, percentages here to figure out so one to um, what is it fly balls are first so one to 26 or one to 260 I guess is a fly ball and then 261 to whatever 260 plus 485 is is a ground ball and then 486 to 100 uh, or whatever that calculation is 7 something uh, to 100 is going to be the line drive so that's how we that's how we figure that out um, for the uh, for the cards and for the outs uh, which does produce a lot of line drives uh, which has been a criticism of the game but think about try to think about a line drive not as a liner to short a line drive is about trajectory. These batted ball stats are about trajectory. Was it a a hard hit ball to the outfield? Maybe not a sinking liner, which I think we would all say, okay, that's a line drive to left. But what about a ball that just stayed at a trajectory that maybe a, to the eye it looks like a fly ball, but there's an actual trajectory angle that says, okay, this is this ball has moved from a line drive to a fly ball. And if it doesn't cross that threshold, then it stays a line drive whenever they're doing batted ball statistics. So it may look to you and me like, oh, that's a fly ball to the outfield. But in reality, it's a, a line drive 
uh, because it's based off of science. It's based off of measurables, not what we have always sort of come to judge as a line drive. So kind of an, an important thing because somebody brought that up the other day. There's a lot of line drives. There are a lot of line drives, but they're not all like hot scorchers to third. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's a little bit different. So something, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. You can adjust those numbers if you want to. It, does, it doesn't really matter to me. Like uh, the aesthetic of the game is what you want it to be. Uh, the reality of the game is not always what we want. <laughs> but the aesthetic is, you know, it's the tabletop. You can make it whatever you want it to be. Um, so you can adjust those numbers if you want more. But basically we're just trying to separate, you know, is this guy a fly ball hitter? Is this guy a line drive hitter? Is he a ground ball hitter? And it's really fascinating because you'll start to see, wow, that guy hit a lot of ground balls. Uh, no wonder he wasn't a very good hitter. <laughs> Or he had a lot of fly balls. No wonder he had a lot of home runs. Um, or vice versa, he had a lot of home runs, so he had a lot of fly balls. Uh, so you can see some like really super interesting things about different players uh, by looking at these stats. So in order to get this, uh, what we need to do, actually, let's, let's, let's copy this first. So you'll see here in the formula, there's a lot of like, crazy kind of stuff going on. There's a, a guy in the community who really helped me out with this. Um, and all these numbers are fine. You don't need to change them or anything. They're all pointing to the right places, uh, to the right columns. This is pointed at column zero, which is here. And that's why these numbers exist up here is so that I can reference them in the cards. Uh, so, uh, one of these is pointing to column two and one to column three. Um, so you can see column two is batting, column three is throwing. Uh, so they're all pointing to particular columns. Um, this, all this data is pointing to a different column. You can see the column changing. And that's the column on the spreadsheet that it's referencing. Uh, but basically all this data says, uh, go into here, pull the data into this card. And then when I copy the card like this, so from line to line from the top of the corner to the bottom uh, corner. When I copy this, uh, I'll just show you a copy, but just as easily control C. Uh, and I paste right at the next one. You can see this next thin line is the same as this thin line. That's the little border. And when I paste that down, uh, it's not pasting the lines. Okay, we'll have to do the uh, we'll have to do the lines in just a moment, um, <clears throat> which is not a big deal. So, Bonnell is the first one in our set. Pacaroba is the next one. Horner and Benedict are the next two. And what this uh, formula up here does is basically it says uh, go from you know basically from uh, where you start at row one and go to row 21 and then I want you to to copy that down to here what I was running into was the sort of the relative and absolute nature of the rows and it was basically offsetting all this by 21 so I had to go back through and and, and basically subtract 21 um, so that I get it down or subtract seven, 17, I guess. So 21 minus the four. <clears throat> so I had to, uh, subtract it by 17 just to get all these numbers to show right. I had to do that for every single, you know, 530 players. So it was just really exhausting and, and taking way too much time. So I reached out to the community and asked if anybody had any solution to my problem. And this was the solution that came up. So basically you can copy over there's uh, one two three four five six seven columns so you can see those seven columns represented here and then it's basically copying everything over to the next column so I don't know exactly uh, how everything works because I'm not like super into formulas I just know that it works and I'm so happy <laughs> because it makes my work 
once I get the data input, it makes the work so much easier. Uh, and so then you can actually copy both. Uh, well, let's go ahead and do, let's do the line here. Make sure we're on the two, the number two, and uh, the thickness should be like a number two. And we'll do to the left. So now we have ours. You just want to make sure there's this little uh, row of space and column of space here. That gives the uh, that gives the cards a nice uh, buffered, you know, from the edge. Gives it a nice buffered appearance. <coughs> so then we're going to copy both of these and just go here and paste. And then now you see Horner and Benedict are there as well. And uh, let's just get this last little bit. I'm not sure this has that on there. Okay. Just make sure they got everything. Sometimes can't see it on this side. So again, we have everyone here. We have all of their positions. We have their uh, batting and throwing. We have all of their statistics coming in. Uh, we have their uh, hitting. We went over Bob Horner before, but we got Pacaroba, Bono. Uh, we've got their base running and their fielding. All this is different, and it's based off of it's just going into their data, each row, and then pulling in all this data, right? And so now when we have one row, we can grab the entire row, copy it, go right here, paste it down and now we've pulled in all that data for all of these players as well um, one thing that would speed up this entire process is if you wanted to just create a baseline one set of fly ball ground ball you didn't care like who it was it's a 1 to 300 for a fly ball it's a 301 to 792 for a, fly, a ground ball and then 793 to 1000 you could just fill that in here and swinging strikeouts are all 1 to 500 or whatever so then you could set that in there like this um, and then when you copy this first one over it would all get put into each of these and then basically when you finished copying these cards down you would be totally done uh, but each of these would have the same percentage the same chance of hitting a fly ball as a ground ball uh, it wouldn't be per the man per the player uh, and again I'm not sure why this is not picking up on the <coughs> picking up on this line here but uh, basically you would come through and you could then copy both and then you could begin pasting down just like this and it would paste down all of the players and all of the players would have uh, all of their stats uh, coming in now it's going to start reaching into the next team here Terry Crowley uh, which is right here and that would be Baltimore um, so essentially it would finish here with the uh, Brizolera Brizolera I guess is how you say it uh, but basically you have all your players here and then um, you would do the next team uh, and then paste down their players you could go ahead and do you could go ahead and do the entire league if if you wanted to um, you know once you got all these guys you could just do everything and then that would make the pasting process uh, much faster you can see it, it just begins to bring in everything in your league um, and you're doing you know lots of rows at a time and as you fill in your data set it's going to begin pulling in um, all of that data into your cards because it exists now uh, in the better card tab but since uh, eventually you'll get to the end I think we're on Houston now um, but even if you started right here after all this data and you went all the way back up copied it now you can do all these rows again uh, right here and then now you have a huge it'll take it a minute to get in there but uh, you have a huge data set 
as it comes down, I see the Yankees and uh, okay, you're at San Diego. You can do it one more time and it'll bring in all the rest. It's going to be San Diego and all the way down to here. Okay, so uh, so basically from here to the end, you're not going to need. So you could uh, you could just delete those rows. Don't need those. <clears throat> and then you would have your data set down here. I still don't know why it's pulling in. Not pulling in that that one little thing. Uh, and then you have a few extra cards here. If you want to keep those for uh, just filling in, um, then you can. But basically, you have the entire data set as cards already. And it's pulling in uh, their singles and hits. It's pulling in their data here. And really, all you need to do is add in their, their ranges and their uh, base running. And then uh, if you wanted to have one single uh, fly ball, ground ball, line drive, then that would be um, that would be set up already. You'd be totally, almost totally done with these. So then you would just go through uh, each one and fill in uh, some of this other information here uh, for each team, and then you you would basically be done with the with the batters um, for the pitchers. And this is going long, so I'm just going to keep keep pressing through. Uh, for the pitchers, we come back to our initial data set, uh, which is at Fangraphs. And again, all this is laid out per fan graphs. Um, and instead of batting, we want to go to pitching. We want to keep our year, 1979. We want to keep the split teams. Uh, the minimum innings pitched we'll keep as well. And what we're going to do is go to our standard and you can see here the holds and blown saves are not being kept at that point so we'll we'll cleanse that data when we pull it into our spreadsheet we have 418 pitchers um, and then some of these are going to be weeded out by total batter spaced like all these guys who have less than a hundred uh, batter spaced they're not going to make it into the final data set uh, no need to add anything down here because it's just these numbers that we need. So we're going to export that data. Again, bring it into a spreadsheet. And let's just clean up some of these areas here that we don't need. We don't need intentional walks. and We don't need their player ID. Uh, but we do need all of the other... We do need all the other stuff. You could cleanse out uh, some things like shutouts, but I wouldn't remove it because that's going to change everything. Uh, I don't include shutouts, but it, it's just an error I made in this spreadsheet originally. Um, but I don't actually use those. But we have access to the data. There just aren't very many shutouts. <coughs> uh, so we have... Um, What I want to do is go ahead and clear, clear, uh, clear out the players who don't need to be here. So total batters faced is 100. And we're going to go by largest. Yes, sort the entire data set by that. Uh, so you can see some of these. These are all players that you know. And when you get below 100, you might know some of these players too. But they're going to be really uh, rookies or people who just got a cup of coffee in the majors. So you see there's uh, about a hundred about a hundred pitchers, a little more than a hundred pitchers who are going to be excluded from this data set just because their total batch faced is uh, less than a hundred. So we'll clear those out and we still have a lot of pitchers here. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, and we're going to uh, make sure that this is sorted uh, by team and so now we have all of our pitchers by team. And you can see here are the Atlanta pitchers. And this is all their data. And what we're going to do is bring in the pitcher name first, because that's what we have over here. And then after that, we'll start with the wins, losses, and go all the way across. 
Um, so we'll do picture name. And just going to copy that down into our sheet. And we come back and we do wins and losses. That's going to be our first. And we're going to go all the way over to strikeouts and then all the way down. And we copy that entire data set. It's connected uh, in the same order as our pictures that we just pasted in. So no need to, don't touch anything, just copy and paste it in. And then that's going to go right to our strikeouts. And you see from the strikeouts over, everything is going to be automatically calculated for you. And it's sort of magical. Uh, we do the same thing here that we did with the batters. Uh, this is just based off of total batters faced. So how many um, how many outs per total batters faced? How many strikeouts? per batter spaced, how many walks per batter spaced, etc. And you go all the way down. Uh, it calculates their stamina. The stamina is N3 divided by H3. So that's going to be total batter spaced divided by gains. So that gives us a stamina. So batter spaced divided by gains. And that's, that's uh, batter spaced per game, basically, is what we're figuring out. Uh, we still have fielding percentage and RF9. I showed you how to do that before. You're just going to do that with pitchers this time, and it's going to auto-calculate that. Uh, we can go over and basically copy our Atlanta, because that's who this team is. Paste that in. And then this is the last Rick Mailer, I believe is the last one. Just to double check, Rick Mailer is the last one. And so we can just copy this down to his right there. So you can see that's the last one. OK, so we just copy that down there. And let's look at our pitcher cards and see what we got so far. So we got the name, stamina, all of our major pitching categories. Uh, stats wise uh, we have our team name we have all of the uh, at-bat statistics and uh, we have yet to input our catching and fielding which I'm not going to go over because it's the exact same thing you just want to make sure that you do it for the pitchers uh, which is uh, why I created this and so what I want to do is let's start here <clears throat> and we want to sort this from A to Z. It's far, actually just do Z to A. So that's going to put all of our pictures at the, at the top. Uh, so these are all your pictures. So these are how many games they got into as a pitcher. So these are going to be all of your pictures. Um, what I'm going to do is just copy that out here so that I have them over here. And then what I want to do is take this data set and I want to uh, sort this range by column H. And we want to go A to Z. So that's going to make just this set right here um, go by alphabetical order. Uh, you're going to need to do the same thing for your pitching uh, data. <clears throat> so Phil Negro down to Rick Mailer and across. And we want to sort that range by column A, A to Z. So that sorts all of our players and their statistics um, <clears throat> by their names. And so now we just have to match up. Uh, we have a few more pictures than we have on our actual data set over here because remember we weeded out. <clears throat> excuse me, we weeded out the uh, the ones who have less than a hundred batter spaced. So we need Divine, McLaughlin, Skoke. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Divine, McLaughlin, Skoke. Uh, sorry. Solomon, Garber, McLaughlin, Williams. Solomon, Garber, Joey, McLaughlin, and Williams. 
Um, keep clicking the wrong one. Uh, Mailer, Necro, Hannah, Mailer. Um, Matula, Office, Brizzlar. That's not right. Uh, Matula, Brizzlar. Okay, so now we have our pictures. I'm just going to copy that and bring that into the correct place, which is the bats throws. Sorry about that. And we'll paste that in here. And we have all of our pitchers with their batting and throwing. So um, these, I didn't do a very good job. And you can see they're kind of out of whack a little bit. Okay, so now they all look the same. One thing I didn't talk about before with the batting data, and I typically do this at the very end. I don't do it now, but I'm going to show you. Uh, with the uh, batter side, the side they bat from, you have some um, switch hitters in here. And I don't like the B for switch hitting. I like S. So what I do is I just do a find and replace. So I, I highlight the column that I want. And really don't just highlight the entire column highlight uh, from the very first all the way down to the very end of the data set and what I want to do is I want to change the B uh, to a capital S and so you replace them all you can see that they've been replaced here there's several of them that have been replaced and now we have an S here so when we look at our batter cards uh, you can see here that it's switch hitter and right-handed thrower to me, I like that better, and I'm going to do the same thing for the batters, I mean the pitchers. So I'm um, going to say I want to turn B into an S. I want to replace them and be done. Okay, so now we have a switch hitter in there, uh, Mickey Mailer. Okay, and then now we need to do our rolls. Uh, the rolls I've been doing on uh, Game Started. So you could do a couple of different things. Again, I'm not going to go over this part. You can go uh, back over here uh, to the fielding. And if you click on uh, fielding pitchers, then you can actually take and export this. And it gives you the fielding percentage and the RF9. So you can just do the pitcher set uh, for the fielding if you wanted to. Um, not if you want to, but that's what you would do. Um, OK, for the roll. Uh, he has zero games started, 40 games pitched. Obviously, he is a relief pitcher. Uh, what I will do is I will come down here like this. And what I want to do is I want to... Uh, and some of this is just, you know, you don't have to do any of this if you don't want to. It just sort of makes more sense to me. Uh, I want to sort this now. In the end, this is how I want the cards to be. I want them to be sorted by innings pitched. Or you could do batter spaced, either one. Uh, but I like to, to choose one of these. And uh, probably batter space is better. That's like plate appearances. So I want to sort it by in. And so I go down here to our advanced sorting. And then we look for the N. And we're going to do Z to A. This is highest to lowest numbers. This is lowest to highest. And then we sort it. So now this data set here for Atlanta has been sorted by uh, total batters faced. And you can go down and see and check that that's true. Um, and so now I'm going to look. And typically, you know, the more batters you face, the more you're a starter. <laughs> so that's kind of makes it easy for me. So I know that Field Negro is a starter. So I put SP. 
and I'm just gonna grab this and I'm looking over here at game started and it looks like down to Mickey Mailer all those guys are starters and then I want to look here this guy's a starter so Larry McWilliams 13 games started in 13 games so I can just copy that paste it there and this guy's a starter so four out of his six games that he's in uh, were starters uh, starts my rule of thumb here is if uh, if you've started at least 50 percent of the games you're in I'm gonna mark you as a starter even if you know a lot of your games have been uh, relief pitching uh, to find the closer you're looking at the saves and Gene Garber was a closer I just put CL and then everybody else is going to be a relief pitcher so I'll just copy that you can highlight multiples and copy it and then Rick Mailer is a relief pitcher so I do the relief pitchers last and you'll you'll see that they match up but um, that's generally how I go through the roles and so now when we look at our pitcher card uh, we have their role uh, it's automatically going to make it red if uh, it's a starting pitcher. If it recognizes in the cell that it's an SP, uh, it's going to do a red uh, number. If it doesn't do that, uh, then you can go to uh, Format and Conditional Formatting. And I just have a condition here that says if the text is exactly capital S, capital P, then give it a custom red color. Um, if that doesn't work for you, you can reach out to me and I can try to help you and work on that a little bit. But basically, we should be able to copy, and we don't have all of our catching and fielding, obviously, but um, we should be able to copy over our next player uh, and do the same thing. Now, this is, is not taking the... Uh, it's not taking the formatting of the lines for some reason it's not a huge deal but uh, these lines are really helpful for being able to cut out the cards and lots of people have said that they've been very helpful uh, so we're going to make sure that we have those lines um, let's just make sure here that we have that line we have the one for the top we have the one for the side. Okay. And so now we've copied over our first four players. So Necro, Solomon, Matula, and Brizolara. Necro, Solomon, Matula, Brizolara. So we have that. Let's do a couple more and we'll be able to see some of our relievers. Just to double check and make sure that our conditional formatting is uh, doing what it's supposed to do. So we copy down the next set. Um, and you can see here that our closer has a black uh, and all of our starters have red so our conditional formatting is working and we have all of our pitchers in we have all their at-bat statistics here um, we are getting a weirdness here I'm gonna have to fix that okay so let's go back on that and I'll fix this in the uh, in the template before I get it all sent out and just make sure that it works but we need to put this in there and then that's going to be a uh, box box our column 21 so for a box we need to do 21 and he had uh, Oh, I'm sorry. It's here. Uh, 36. <laughs> like, we're not counting how many boxes you have. We're counting that calculated number. So 36. Okay. Uh, so here we have his box. 54 to 965, 966 to 968. So he has a like a 0.2% chance at a box. Um, and then 969 to 1,000. So now when we copy it, it should copy it with this formula, which is what we really wanted. Um, copy that. 
copy that all over. You can see it's working up here still. And this needs that here. Okay, so now we have it correctly with the uh, box in there. So you can see these are all different. That'll be like a tip off when they're all the same. Um, so then we come down, we make sure everything is still okay. Okay, good. And the last part of this is, is clean up, especially on the pitcher cards. Uh, so you're kind of just checking that it goes 652 to 653, 730 to 731, 46, 47, 53, 54, etc., etc. Uh, most of your starters are going to be okay. Uh, it's when you get into the relievers, it gets a little wonky through here. Uh, so you can see 71, 72, 73, 74, 73. That's not right. Okay, and the reason is when it's doing the calculation, it's not finding uh, any coherence here because uh, there's a zero for the box. He had no box, Eddie Solomon did. So 73 should go right to 74. And when it's like this where the left number is higher than the right, then I just want to erase that on the card. So you just kind of go through here and look and see if there's any inconsistencies. One thing that you'll notice is you get the same number on the right hand side. And if you get the same number on the right, then it's going to be a no go like right here, 985, 985. That shouldn't be the case. These should be, it should go up on the right hand side. So you can see 985, 986 to 985, that's not, that doesn't exist. So now you have 985 to 986. Here we get 976 to 976. That's only, that should just be one number. Like that. Okay. So that's sort of how that works. Um, and you would go through each of your, your player cards. You do the same thing over here. If there's any inconsistencies with, um, some of these numbers like here, uh, Pacaroba, 999 and then 1000 and 999, that should not exist. And then this 1000 should just be a 1000. Okay, so you just clean up uh, a little bit of what's going on over here. Uh, sometimes you get a, a one to zero like this on the green light. If we look at Charlie Spikes, Charlie Spikes is here. His green light is uh, a zero. So he had zero stolen base attempts and 35 stolen base opportunities. So it's doing this calculation and it's getting zero. So zero divided by 35 is zero. So he literally had no, he has no green light, right? It should be a zero. And so if you ever see a zero here for a green light, that's what you get. You just sort of manually input that as a zero. So you're just kind of looking through uh, for some of these guys, especially with pitchers, you're going to get that a lot because <coughs> they didn't steal. So you just kind of come through and, and figure that out. If you see some things like this, he has hits, or they're all singles, 1 to 1,000. So you can just simply erase that. Same thing there, he had a single on double, uh, but no triples or home runs. So you can just erase that and turn that into a zero. This is just kind of the cleanup process in these cards uh, as you go along. This one's funky. So again, on the right side, they're the same number. So you're just going to erase this one. 888 to 889. Um, this one looks like it's not right, but it is. But this one needs to go to a 1000. Uh, so there's just like little kinds of uh, errors in the calculations that you need to make sure you straighten out this one. Uh, needs to be changed and typically again you're going to get it with these players who don't have a lot of at bats um, that's normally where the errors are going to come from so you just clean it up a little bit and you're going to go through uh, each set and do that you're going to get very familiar with these players <laughs> uh, and um, that's going to be your initial set now this is getting long. It's almost two hours now. So I'm going to do a separate video to show you how to get, excuse me, how to get the fly ball, ground ball, and swinging strikeouts. Now, I have a little bit of an advantage because I've been doing these seasons all together, and I can just kind of uh, reach into another season and pull this 
data and pull it back into this spreadsheet. Um, but I'll show you how I went about getting the data and uh, you can feel the pain of that a little bit. <laughs> uh, but again, if you wanted to just do a sort of a consistent, everybody has the same opportunity for fly balls, ground balls, line drives and swinging strikeouts, then you can just uh, fill in that data on your first card and then every time you copy it over, it'll be copied over into the next card. Uh, and that would make it super easy uh, for you to do that. And, you know, honestly, within the gameplay, there's some strategy that comes in with sending up a guy who hits fly balls when you need uh, you need a fly ball to the outfield to score a run. It's really few and far between when you're going to use that strategy. It's kind of a minute strategy, but there is a little bit of strategy there. And, uh, you know, you don't want to hit into a double play. So you don't send up a guy who's going to hit a lot of ground balls, that kind of stuff. Uh, so a very minute strategy. If you don't care about that kind of thing, then uh, you can just input one single fly ball, ground ball, line drive percentage. Not a percentage, but do it like this, one to whatever. And again, this is 67.9%, right? You think about it that way. This is 68% uh, to 77.7%. .7%. So kind of figure out percentages and then convert those, multiply them by... Um, well, I guess if you did 67%, you would multiply that by 10 and move the decimal over 1. Uh, and then you make it 1 to whatever. So that that would be how you do uh, sort of making your life a little bit easier uh, in that way. And then the pitching cards are almost finished. They're a lot easier because they don't have that. And then all you need to do is figure out the catch, uh, which is fielding percentage, and range, which is range factor per 9 innings. And then those will be basically completely done and you just cut, keep copying those down. This guy here still doesn't have a, a bottom line. Um, and then you just keep copying those down and you'll wind up with all the pictures. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, uh, which maybe you do, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you're at all interested in taking the template and creating seasons for uh, quick pitch baseball or maybe you just want to create some very specific sets like uh, Hall of Famers or uh, you want to do like team uh, best players in the team history that kind of thing uh, you'll probably have to go through and input these <coughs> excuse me input these players all one at a time I'm not sure how you would do that uh, but communities full of smart guys <laughs> and you all can probably run circles around me doing this stuff <clears throat> but this is uh, sort of where I've gotten to uh, at this point uh, in terms of automation and being able to create seasons relatively quickly, you know, within a couple of weeks or a week, uh, I can create an entire season. Um, then go for it. Uh, and, and once you have that, if you would, uh, hopefully I'm still on it as a, as a person who's there. I'll share, basically I'll share, uh, create a new one. A new spreadsheet I'll share it with you uh, I'm using Google Sheets and you basically go through Google Sheets and, and just fill this stuff out it's pretty easy because you're just in a browser the whole time and kind of figuring stuff out as you go along uh, but if you want to sort of walk through it together uh, I'd be happy to do that or if you get stuck somewhere uh, maybe we can do a little screen share or something like that we've got the ability up here uh, to do a call and if you have a Google account it makes it Super easy to use this. I don't know if you'll be able to do it if you don't have a Gmail account. Um, but we'll just have to see. Uh, if you export this, it looks really bad in Excel, and I don't have like an exportable uh, version that you could just work on in Excel that makes it look good. Um, so maybe maybe someone from the community can create that for me because I don't have that right now, <clears throat> and I don't know if all the formulas and everything connect over well I just haven't tried it really um, yeah just leave a comment down in the comment section below if you haven't subscribed to the channel we've got uh, demo games uh, if you haven't played the game go to quickpitchgame.com and download one of the seasons we've got 75 82 and 86 so far and then there's also a 70s champions uh, set which is pretty new and that's just, it's all of the World Series winners from 1970 to 1979, which is a lot of fun to kind of put together and, and kind of gives you an idea of what you can do 
um, as far as putting sets together. Uh, you could do just as easily the teams that were in the World Series uh, for a particular decade, which I've done for on base before, or you can just do the winners, or you can do, you know, your data sets can be whatever they want to be. Uh, as long as you attach them uh, in the right way, they'll create these cards that are very quick pitch baseball. And um, then we'll have some really unique content out there that everybody can play, and uh, you can play it, but you're also sharing it with the community so that they can also play the sets that you've created, which I think is, is a pretty cool opportunity. So if you're interested, uh, send me an email to um, quickpitchgame at gmail.com or you can send me a message on Facebook Messenger. Uh, you can find me on the Quick Pitch uh, Facebook group and you can send a message there as well and uh, we'll get that out and see if we can start creating some sets if you're interested in that. Uh, maybe you just want to do one, that's fine. If you want to do lots of different years, then that's fine too. Uh, the more of us that do this, the faster we get sets out there and the more uh, people will probably join in because they have a, a year that they want to play or, or a set of years they want to play and then there will be content for those years. Okay, uh, sorry for such a long video, but uh, just this part training part just showing you uh, how to go through it and what to do and what what happens uh, whenever I'm creating a set so it's you know 80% of the work gets done for you once you import the data um, and then there's a little bit of legwork uh, for cleaning things up and and bringing in some other pieces of information uh, and if anybody has any suggestions about how this process can be made even easier uh, I am all ears so I would love one day to just be able to bring in my data set and put it into uh, the data tab and then everything just gets done for me. I would love to have that. <laughs> and and doing newer seasons, uh, I would be able to do that for all of these because we would have those batted ball statistics. Um, it's just when you go back farther than 1986 or 7 or something like that, maybe even 88, when you go back uh, farther than that we don't have that st those statistics otherwise uh, I would be able to bring all this data in uh, through the share and export and you know we would have if I did 1996 we would have Mark Grace's um, batted ball stats and be able to to deal with that uh, so just one of those things and um, um, the majority of the guys I could see playing this would be wanting 70s or 80s but uh, maybe some people want more modern seasons as well and we can begin to work uh, our way through those as well uh, so this part would be a lot easier more programmatic okie doke all right uh, thanks for watching um, i appreciate everybody who subscribed and who has paid attention to the game downloaded the game played the game talked about the game um, <coughs> I hope it's enjoyable to you. It's a little bit of a different take on tabletop baseball, but hopefully a really enjoyable take uh, coming at baseball kind of from the back door uh, of the pitcher side and the defense side. And if you have any suggestions or comments about the game itself to make it better, please uh, let me know. I know there are some inconsistencies with the game that they seem like they don't work out very well, but I think when you play the game, you can see that they do. Um, and there are some, so there's still some holes to fill up in the game. Uh, so any suggestions that you have for uh, bringing more of the batter into the game to bear on each at bat without destroying the concept of the game uh, would be, uh, I will listen to it for sure and uh, see if we can work that into the game. All right, I think that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.